What's going on, everybody? You know what time it is. It's time for your top shelf cannabis news this week. I'm your co-host, Buzz. And let me tell you, a Chicago cannabis firm is facing a RICO suit claiming that they have been pot trafficking. Whoa, Whoa. that's uh, getting big. Well, what's going on, everybody? I'm Theron Miller, and I am your other co-host here at The Chronic News. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we're also going to talk about how unions are now getting into the cannabis game up there in Illinois as well. So uh, stay tuned. And we'll get right into the show. All right, man. Ooh, welcome it's a, back. Yeah, it's it's a heck of a week here for cannabis. Yeah, another yeah, another big giant getting in some trouble, and there's also some good going on too. So. There's some good going on. A little bit more globalized news yeah, this week. definitely. Um, not so much just national. Not so much, yeah. So it's uh, really interesting uh, what we've got going on. So let's just jump right into it. What do you say? Diving in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, so Switzerland is now allowing doctors to directly prescribe can- medical cannabis. Uh, so That's now right. they, they basically have it to where... Um, you already can't, you can't, you have to have a medical card anywhere, you know, you have to own, you can only get medical or cannabis there for medical reasons. Right. So now they're saying that, Hey, and it's still on like a controlled substance on their narcotics act too. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. And so they have, um, now de scheduled this whole thing that this whole legislation that they've put into the process, they are descheduling cannabis and cannabis rosins from, uh, from their, basically the 1961 single convention of narcotic drugs. (laughs) And, uh, so, so basically what they're doing is, is by doing so, they are now widely recognizing the plant for its medicinal use. Or at least given a chance to have a, a, a real study done about it and see what, what medicinal benefits can happen from it. Yeah. yeah. And so they're saying that uh, essentially you can now go to – and you can't just go to any doctor. You have to go to a doctor who is – a prescribed physician under the federal health office. Right, right. Um, and they, as long as they're uh, licensed under them, they would be able to be able to prescribe cannabis. From my understanding, it's to, it's whatever their the diagnosis is up to that doctor. There, there is no pre pre existing conditions. There's nothing yeah. like that. Go in, talk to the doc, and he's like, "This is what you need." That you need you need the green. Yeah, not just like sign a few things like here in Oklahoma. Yeah, no pre-existing medical requirements. So the good thing is is I I think this is a big move and a good move I know. Um, because I, you know for doctors obviously if you want to prescribe cannabis you're not going to go get licensed to be able to do so so you obviously are cannabis friendly. Which means that you're probably going to hand out prescriptions left and right, yeah. which would now allow more processors uh, and growing to come into the country. Um, and if we're hiding our offshore funds there, we might as well be getting our green there. Oh, I'm looking forward to, you know, they got Swiss, Swiss knives. What about like a Swiss bong or a Swiss pipe? Oh, <laughs> can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. Great. You know, like the old porta pipes, you know, a little compartment, a little cleaning tool, everything came apart. All right there. All right there in one. But this is this is like a you just open them up. This would be a Swiss pipe. Tools. You just open it, and your weed's already packed. There's a lighter there. Yeah. You're like yeah. I like it. And it should be gold. Right? Don't let us down, Swiss. Swiss, one. make it gold too. <laughs> oh, I like the red and white. You know, because that's all right. Yeah, I take the red and white too. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just that's this. All right, just make a Swiss pipe. Yeah. All right. We'll leave, we'll leave what it looks like <laughs> up to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. Uh, mm, more so national news. More national news. Man, this is it really is a big week for national global marijuana. Global cannabis. Global cannabis. The big GC. The yeah. <laughs> so Mexico is on the verge of passing a landmark cannabis bill. Yeah, recreational. Recreational. Twelve and up. No, I'm just kidding. It's, it's eighteen. And <laughs> eighteen up. and older. Um, with a permit, you would be able to grow, carry, and consume. Cannabis and all of its derivatives. Yeah, that's kind of awesome. Yeah, that's really nice. Like, let's just make it easy. Anything let's, cannabis, legal. So, um, obviously, there's just some concerns with this, right? I mean, obviously, the, the, the it's a good move for them, they believe. 
Um, they believe it's a good move for a lot of reasons. Um, the the big reason they think it's a good move is because of the cartels. Yeah. So they say, hey, you want to curb cartel violence? Well, let's legalize um, cannabis here in our country, and you know it would curb the it would curb a lot more of the violence that's happening. They also say that. Um, you know, some of the experts are also saying, "Hey, well, we might as well decriminalize a lot more, a lot of the other drugs, um, because <laughs> it helps curb the violence." Uh, it does pose a very interesting, um, a very interesting uh, trade possible, like trade possible trade issues between America and <clears throat> between North America and Mexico. Right. Um, we should which be is doing that with our northern border already, Canada. That'd be yeah. great. But I guess since it's federally illegal, you can't actually do any trade. But once it does happen That's here, would soon. we be able to trade? I don't know. I, I mean, would so. it be imported and exported like coffee? coffee? Yeah, coffee. Tobacco. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be awesome. That'd be great. I'd be ordering stuff from all over the place. Yeah. Um, so there obviously is a, there. There's obviously a lot of con. There is some concern. Experts, or some of the experts are saying they are concerned with it. However, most of everybody thinks that it will be a very good deal. There is definitely going to be some trade things that we're, are going to have to conversations that are going to have to take place. But I think with the direction that America is moving, you know, the North America is moving with the their, I think I don't see it being an issue for very long. I just I would be more concerned as like they're going to legalize it there. I'd be crazy to think that the cartels wouldn't want in on that money. Well, yeah. So, and yeah, that is true. Because yeah. we've shown that it's a that markets who per state here, you know. yeah, markets who are going legal are now that is now that said, I don't know. I haven't. It's been a bit since I've looked this statistic up, but the the billions of dollars that are being that we are seeing on the legal side are really. Like that's ten percent of what the actual cannabis market is doing. Like ninety per eighty to ninety percent of the cannabis market is still black market, right. from what I understand. Right. So I mean, I can't imagine. That's crazy to think yeah. about. But yeah. um, <laughs> either way, Mexico is doing some good stuff. Yeah. They're making some things happen, and we got uh, green I think states it's and now green countries. Let's yeah. do it. Let's just make I, this a green globe. Yeah, I agree. So uh, good job for Mexico. Way to go and. You know, I think the only place I see it really being a big deal is like the states that are that border Mexico that aren't had really? zero, yeah, medical nothing yeah. like Texas. Well, they're gonna have um, probably a huge influx of a, weed. A, a bigger influx. <laughs> well, they would have a bigger influx of weed yeah. because now you have everybody that's eighteen or older with a permit that can bring Just anything cross. across the border. Yeah. So. You know, and there's some good growing environments down in Mexico. Yeah, Don't well, think for a second there's not. It's green and everything else down there. They got plenty of growing environment. They got up in the mountains, so they can get some good stuff. I believe it. Yeah, so I've had some. <laughs> some Acapulco gold. I've had some. It's been it's been a bit. It's it been has a been a long time. I think it was in high school last time I got some Mexican. I graduated from high school last time I had some good Mexican. There you go. Man, this is a big one. Oh, yeah, huh? Yeah, so this is one of the big headlines uh, we talked about at the top of the show. Uh, so unions, um, they're fighting now to get uh, weed workers, they're, you know, they're fighting to get into the weed game, basically, is, is the whole unions gist of it. Are, yeah. they are, unions are wanting to get a part of it. They're wanting to get involved in the prosperity of the Illinois marijuana market. Uh, the sales are soaring up there. Um, they're doing a, a absolutely amazing. They just came off of a one billion dollar in revenue from their recreational sales. Yeah. That's not talking about their med their medical sales, from their recreational sales, a billion dollars in revenue. And so um, the goal obviously is they want to seek higher pay, uh, they want to seek career advancements, yeah. better protections from COVID, and you know everybody from you know basically the whole entire state, from the very far north Chicago all the way down to Springfield. Yeah. Um, and so. The local, there's a local union there, local 88, the local 881, um, which is a United uh, Food and Commercial Workers International Union. Um, they are wanting to um, get in and represent cannabis workers in Illinois. They Late last month, they signed about 40, they got about 40 to 80 different people to join and say, hey, yes, we want to be a part of the union. Oh, yeah. Um, 
That's, so they think it's gonna. That's gonna pick up momentum, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's good because I know here in Oklahoma we have a lot of issues with even just being a dispensary worker with shady, uh, shady employers. You know, not wanting to pay you, underpaying you, screwing you over, and letting you go to hire somebody else to keep them around for a month or two to do it to them. Or you have dispensaries out there making your employees sign NDAs, and then you're yeah. taking advantage of them sexually back in a grow room. Yeah. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so it would be nice. Yeah, to it would be nice like to have some. They know that they're taken care of as employees. And yeah, and so you know that's that said, the union they're going to represent a, a fraction of of the state's eighty two different dispensaries, twenty one different um, cultivation centers, and they have right now currently about seventeen thousand cannabis workers. Wow. Now, there's also some bad things that come with this, oh, yeah. right? Always. You know, just as we've seen in the past, uh, unions Jimmy Hoffa. can be a bad thing. Um, they can be corrupt organizations. Yeah, very. Um, just, yeah, you give them the opportunity to be. Given the opportunity, yeah. So um, there's obviously some things that are, are, I think unions, when used in the right manner, can be a very good thing for everybody. I agree. The problem is, is I don't believe that most unions are used in that. I manner. think they start out that way, and then they just realize how easy and it can be corrupted. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm interested to know: Do you support cannabis unions, um, or do you not? Now, here is when we're talking about this cannabis union. I did a little extra research on this. Okay. So obviously they did a billion dollars in sales, and that's just on the recreational market. So there's a lot of money to be made there, which means that dispensary owners, if there's only 81 of you in the state, you're making a lot making of killing. money. Yeah. I mean, you are killing it. Yeah. And so all of that said, you shouldn't be paying your damn employees $16 an hour when the living minimum wage in Chicago is $20 an hour and a one-bedroom freaking apartment in Chicago is $1,600 a month or $2,100 a month. I looked it up. The average pay for somebody living in Chicago... Above the poverty line? Above... No, no, no. no. This The poverty line is... The, the, it, well, I don't know what the poverty line is. I don't know. I just looked up what is the okay. average pay. That's $42,389 a year on average, which if you do the math on that, it's about $815 a week. And then divide that by 40, right. gives you about $20.53 or something like that before per taxes. hour before taxes. Now, you take into account living expenses and everything else. You 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 need somebody else in the house making a little bit of money yes. too, especially I mean because it's just Over expensive. Made, yeah, it's expensive to live there. <laughs> Selling weed on the black market. <laughs> the problem is is that you have dispensary owners out there paying your people fifteen and sixteen dollars an hour yeah. in that market. Yeah. Here's the thing. Let me let you in on a little secret. As a business owner, um, I'll I'll tell you firsthand. Um, but as as any, you know, just across the board, good wages. Attract good people, yeah. loyal people, and people who will go above and beyond for you. So pay your people good, and they might be willing to go learn more about the cannabis strains. They might will be willing to promote it on their own time. Yeah. They might be happy to come to work. Yeah. They might sell more Upsell and push more. And, yeah. They might upsell. And if they don't, get rid of them. But if a union steps in, you're gonna have some issues. Not, yeah, now you've got somebody else mediating it. So yeah, you got somebody else mediating the whole entire thing. Now who's so, watching the unions, making sure they're regulated? Uh, well, I, you know, it's supposed to be. Uh, they're supposed to be um, outside, you know, uh, oversight over them. Outside, but, right? Uh, outside of the union, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, butt tenders in Chicago, yes, yeah, is right here. Butt tenders in Chicago, on a 2020 salary uh, guide, they made fifteen dollars an hour. Wow. So, that's crazy. There you go. How you living? I wonder yeah. if they get an employee discount too. I work for a guy. He gave me an employee discount. It was ten percent off. <laughs> The same thing he gives same everybody. Thing he gives everybody. Yeah, that's I was pathetic. like, yeah, you're a bum. But now, yeah, he's about to lose everything. He's made some poor choices. Yeah, well, uh, so happens. Take care of your people. Do good by people, and good things will happen to you. Yeah. So again, I'm not saying that I'm for the union. 
No. But I'm not saying that, uh, you know, but I am I am saying is, is if there's 81 dispensaries in your state and you made a billion dollars on just recreational, share the damn yeah, wealth. take God, care of your people. Yeah. I mean, come on. You know, they're the ones coming to work for you every damn day. So let us know in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you think that there should be unions for cannabis workers? Or do you think that there shouldn't be uni unions? Let us know. Let what do you know. think? Yeah. This next one's nice. It's a former Hazel Park, Coney Island. That's in Michigan. Is now turned into a Shango cannabis dispensary. Never heard of Shango. I've been to their one in Vegas. It was uh, beautiful. Really yeah. big. They had a grow attached to it. Uh, really? Super friendly staff. Really made you feel comfortable. Wasn't so much of a doctory type feel or an uptight feel. It was like really lax and comfortable. Nice. Like going to a friend's house. <laughs> well, he does talk about that. That's he actually talks about hey, how he likes to look at their customers as fr the the general manager there, um, Spencer Fakuri. Shout out to you, buddy. Thank but he you, says Spencer. he likes to look at uh, them as uh, friends, not shoppers. Yeah. And uh, he wants basically he wants to create a culture and an atmosphere where everybody can come in and uh, actually, you know, s smoke there and, and not smoke there, but obviously have a good time there. And, um, yeah, feel know, comfortable. Hang out. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. really like it. Very interesting. Yeah, what they got? They're a multi-state company. They've got locations in Oregon, Nevada, California, and Arizona, and then they've re recently opened those locations in Michigan, which is the Lapeer and Bay City area. So they're in what, four states, you said? Yeah, five now with Michigan. Five now. Yeah. Okay. So if you got a Shango in your area, go check it out. Always a beautiful store. Always cool people there. Good. Yeah, yeah I like that. I'm in. Oh, wow. It says 4,700 square foot sales floor. Why yeah, would you not want to check that out? That's crazy. 4,700 square feet. That's it's bigger than my house. That's the size of like... <laughs> that's... Two and a half houses. Yeah, it's huge. It's the sales floor, too. So imagine all the cool stuff they got there. Yeah, in the back and everything else. Well, Cure Leaf goes global. Yeah. Yeah. That's, this is a big story, too, I think. These guys just came. They th this get These guys and gals, they just came off their. Didn't you say they just came off like their, their biggest, biggest quarter ever? Yeah. And that was last. This the last quarter. Yeah. Which would have been. What? The fourth quarter of last year. And and they came off their fourth uh, biggest ever. And now they are entering the Europe cannabis market. They just did a $285 million deal, making them the largest cannabis brand in on the globe. On the globe right now, yeah. yeah. They're in eight different countries. Yeah, that's yeah, that's awesome. Like wow. Uh, they are the largest operator in Oklahoma or in in the US. Oh yeah. Um, and so that's that's crazy. Uh, they they actually are even a publicly traded. I was going to say uh, they got stock yet, and that would be a good time yeah, maybe uh, to buy some. Not financial advice. Yeah, stock ticker C U R A. Um, they're up uh, two percent. Uh, looks like two point seven five percent today. Yeah, they are. and then looks like they're up fifteen point three two percent after hours. So that's interesting. Yeah, everybody's uh, like Wall Street bets, baby. <laughs> um, to the moon <laughs> yeah so that is an interesting uh, that is very interesting I see this being a good thing and I see it being a bad thing good thing because you know hey the more if you're doing good business and doing good you business, can grow yeah. keep grow keep do doing it. it yeah keep putting out good product yep. good you know when you have when you have a lot of money, you have the ability to put out good product, put out good things because you have the time to research and development. And you can back different studies and things like that. You're doing a very – I think you you could do a lot of yeah, really good things. you're taking the time to do it right. Um, however, this can also be a bad thing if you, if you look at it. Obviously, there's a good and a bad to everything, yeah. right? You know, but um, – I feel negative Nancy, like I'm negative Nancy this week. I know. I'm always trying to be all positive, and you're just like, yeah, well, you're turning up. that's really awesome, but guess what? Corruption. <laughs> right? Well, that's what you're leading up to, right? Well, it could be. Uh, I mean, I mean, you're going to be knows. the largest cannabis company in the world. And then that when, when you're the largest opportunity for yeah. corruption, if you want to try to control prices or you could, Yeah, you, exactly. Yeah. You want to... You, you become the largest. I see what you're saying, negative You Nancy. would control the prices. But, I mean, you, you lower the prices, you... You know, think about it. we see that here in Oklahoma. Even well, you've got the large, you know, you've got multiple. Uh, uh, one dispensary owns multiple lo 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 you can multiple go in there and get different like locations. You ten grams of dabs for a hundred bucks and stuff. Yeah, or you know, you, you just you, yeah, you exactly you can't compete. 
It's, what it, was the Spider-Man thing with great responsibility or with great power comes, comes great, great responsibility? responsibility. Yeah, yeah, so, so. Cure, it is what it is. Purely, remember that. I think cure, I think Spider-Man. They, it. Yeah, I think they. I think they'll do good. Uh, I mean, I, I do too. I don't think that they've. Um, they I haven't gotten think, this far by doing bad. Business. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that typically people aren't gonna. You know, typically. No, but that's cool. Yeah, it is really cool. One day we'll be global. One day, g- prestige worldwide. Prestige. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm going for. I'm gonna name my boat that. The prestige I'm, worldwide. I'm going for like. No, I think I'll name my the boat. The Chronic like, Worldwide. Haterade. That's what I'm gonna name my boat. Hey, there's not. so many haters out there. Haterade. <laughs> haters. I'm gonna call mine uh, Chronic to the Moon. Chronic to the moon, and then have the little guy on it. Yeah, or I'll, I'll just have chronic, a weed leaf, and a rocket. There we go. I'm like, what right. is that? I'm just like, you know. Yeah. If you know, if you if you know, you know. <laughs> and if you don't know, ask somebody. Yeah, get in on it. <laughs> you need to ask somebody because you're missing know. somebody. Well, that brings us to the big story tonight. This is Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. You're in the news again. Damn yeah. it. And in. another cannabis one in a big lawsuit. I think we're going to see more of these. The closer we get to a federal legalization, they're going to start. Really busting these companies for the illegal activities they've been doing, I think. Yeah, um, I'm really interested in this headline, real, you know, the sub headline to this. Um, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> All right, let's, let's do it. But the, the, the sub headline, the, the headline reads Chicago cannabis firm faces a RICO suit claiming pot trafficking. trafficking. Right. The, the thing that gets me about <laughs> this is the sub headline is. An ex-employee smuggled marijuana-laced salads <laughs> out of Illinois to launch an Arkansas cannabis cultivation operation. Is what the lawsuit alleges. Yeah, salads, salads. It's a green, right? Nice. They're not gonna know. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're <laughs> clearly not gonna know. Apparently, they didn't for a while, right? No, apparently not. They got them. Uh, they got them. They 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 were doing this back in. Uh, back in uh, 2018, but look at here's the deal uh, again. So, uh, Verano. Yeah, it's not just one company. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah, there is several others, but there is a big company, uh, Verano, and uh, they're valued at 2.8 billion dollars. Oh wow! No, I have bet not anymore. Yeah, yeah, probably not. <laughs> and they just went public um, on the Canadian um, Securities Exchange. So oh, they're a Canadian company. Yeah. So um, oh, wow. very interesting there. Very interesting. But um, yeah, basically them and several other uh, pot firms conspired to start up a cannabis dispensary in Arkansas with joint operations going back and forth, which isn't quite legal to do that yet. So they were, they were basically. Taking marijuana from their legal grows and 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 dispensaries from up there and, and just trafficking it, taking down, it all the way down, yeah, to and Arkansas. Back to that dumb dispensary I knew earlier. We were talking about he was doing the same thing. So let me ask you. I mean, obviously you can't. Or you alleged can't, he was doing this. Yeah, I, I I don't know personally. I've only heard. You obviously you can't take. Uh, you can't move dispenser across state lines, as we know it's not federally legal. So you would be breaking inter- you know, federal law. Can't move any product. You can't move any product at all. That's yeah. literally That's drug trafficking. Drug trafficking. Yeah. Um, however, it happens. It happens on small scales all the time. Yeah, um, it happens on large scales. And so, the reason why this is interesting to me is because. Um, out of all states that you would take it to, it's interesting that they chose Arkansas because Arkansas has a pretty strict medical marijuana program, if I understand. And on top of them being a pretty strict medical marijuana program, um, I don't believe that there's, what, 30, 20, 20, 30 dispensaries in the whole entire state. So you, you, you've got a lot more visibility. What they had, they had set up like a cultivation they were going to start growing, so they were taking trimmings from their grow to go in there, there and then putting them in with the salads and hiding them in with the salads and taking them down there to start their cultivation down there and start growing there. 
Which is not a bad idea, but still, legally, you can't put cross plants across state lines. No. It, it's still illegal. Yeah. yeah. They could have done seeds. They could have taken their own genetics or something. That's what I, I mean. Yeah, that, well, I just don't understand why you wouldn't have taken your own genetics. Like, Maybe to they, take seeds down there. Yeah. I mean, I, I get it. You want to get a jump start in the market, so you bring in... You know, yeah, but you're, you're well. Yeah, that's a big jump start, actually. So, well, yeah, that would be. Yeah. I mean, that. I mean, you're talking yeah. a couple months, probably yeah. at least, right? Yeah. I mean, how long does it take to you, grow from from seed to flower? What's that? Pro- how like long? Four months. When four months. Harvest. Yeah. So I mean, you're talking about if you're bringing. But if down you're starting clippings. up a cultivation and you don't have the seeds, you're bringing down clippings. You're using a mother and you're cloning a bunch, so you're bringing down a bunch of clones. So that would take you some time. Well, yeah, but you're still... It's not like I just popped a bunch of seeds and let them go. No, but you're still a couple of months ahead of Yeah, you're, you're still, still a couple yeah, months exactly. ahead of You're putting schedule. yourself ahead. Yeah. Yeah, but it's... The problem, it's just like what we said, right? When earlier, last week, I believe it was, whenever we were talking about... It's just, it's it's too easy to do things legally in these legal states. It's yeah. too easy to do it legally. You, you're given that opportunity to do it legally. Just do it. Like, yeah. why are you still trying to mess around with the legal stuff? It's shocking to me. Well, the problem is, is there's a ton of money to be made in the market in, in the cannabis market, so that's probably why. I think a lot of people too, they don't they don't know how to get their foot. They're in the legal market, but they don't understand how to really run the legal market. They know how to go out there and pedal on the streets. Yo, I got some gas. Check this out. You know. Yeah. Instead of actually becoming a business uh, owner, you know, and learning about cannabis strains and how to run your business, they'd yeah. rather still look cool like there's some, you know, gangsta. <laughs> Something I don't know what the hell it is, I but definitely, definitely got to get. Weed dealer, I guess. Yeah, that's cool. I don't know. Now, now you got federal drug trafficking charges, buddy. <laughs> and, and you're looking at straight prison time. Yeah. I mean, you got a two point eight million that's... dollar company, and now, now you're it's going all, to prison. Yeah, because you wanted to start start your company off with a little head start. Yeah, that's a little crazy. I think got to make some better choices. But I think we're going to start seeing a lot more of this the closer we come to a federal legalization. I think they're going to be like, let's start getting these people out of it before they go federally legal. Because they're doing it already. Well, the problem is, is now there's more visibility on the cannabis market as a whole. Oh, yeah. For sure. So, it's just all understood. Dot your I's, cross your T's. Boom. Boom. Well, that was it, guys. That was your top headlines for this week in the Chronic News. And, uh, man, I uh, tell you what. Do us a favor, head over to our Facebook page. You're probably watching it already there. Scroll on down there, hit that like button, then scroll back up to the top. And if you'd like, become a supporter. Supporter. If you do become a supporter, you get a lot of fun, exclusive, cool benefits. Um, You're going to get exclusive behind the scene access. You're going to get exclusive discounts. You're going to get live digital copy. Free digital copy of the magazine every month. You get to do story recommendations, free giveaway, all kinds of stuff that is exclusive to our supporters only. Also, the first 50 people who sign up help us get this goal. You're going to get a free pipe that we will send to you. These are super cool. Um, We're going to send it out to you. So, uh, the Chronic Magazine is a national brand magazine. Um, we are just headquartered and focused here in Oklahoma, so that's always fun. And you guys go over and check us out on YouTube as well. So oh, make yeah. sure you head over to YouTube. We're on the tube. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell button so you make sure to get notified every single time we drop a There's video. So many buttons. I know. Links will be uh, up in the description or down below in the description. Links will be here and there. So. Make sure that uh, you go do all those following things and yeah. stuff on social media. So all those links, yeah, likes, bells, whistles, absolutely. Clicks. So we, uh, that's it. Oh. We love you guys. Got to wait another week. Got to wait another week. Oh, that's man. just how it is. You all make sure to stay you, and I'll stay me. Till next week. Spread love, not the Rona. Go hug a stranger. <laughs> <laughs>